Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you vectors in C++. So what is a vector? Right now when we've used arrays, they all have been of a static size. We all specified the size of the array. But what if we don't know what the size of the array is going to be? For instance, we don't know how many different animals we're going to have in our game. We don't know how many different enemies we're going to have in our game. Then we can't just use an array because that would specify a size, so it will always be an X amount of enemies. So what we can do is we can use a vector, and basically what a vector is, it's a resizable array. It's an array without a specified size. We can always change that. How do we declare a vector? What we type in is vector, then we use a smaller than, then the variable type, then a bigger than, and then the name of the vector. So basically we're declaring a variable with vector in front of it and the square brackets around the variable type. So in this example, I'm once again going to use friends. I've created a vector of strings called friends. But how do we add something to a vector? Well, we use this little function that a vector gives us called push back, and then we specify between the soft phrases what we want to push back. And how do we access something inside of a vector? Well, we simply do it the same way as we do it in an array. So let's now dive into the code and see what happens. Okay, now that we're in our main.cpp file, we need to include one thing first. We need to do how to include and then we need to include a vector. Otherwise, we're not able to use vectors to their fullest extent. So let's now create a vector of friends, so a vector of strings with our mains. So we're going to type in vector. Normally, we'd have to do std vector, but I've used using namespace std to get rid of the std namespace. We're going to create a vector of string. See that I also included string. And then we call it friends. So let's now add a few friends. So what we're going to do is friends a pushback, let's do jack, friends.pushback, david, and let's do one more, friends.pushback, oh, Annie. Okay, so now we've specified all of our different friends, so let's now print them all out to the console. So we're just going to create a little for loop, so for int i, which stands for index, is equal to zero, i is less than and this is a little bit different in vectors. We don't have to specify a number here. We don't have to type in three because with three different friends, we can use something very specific that a vector has. Friends.size. So the vector name dot size that will give you the number. So in this case, three. But if we added one more friend, it would be four. And then I plus plus. So this basically makes sure that you will loop over every element inside of the vector without having to specify or hard code a number. So what we now can do is do a, a console out friends i and an end line. So if we now run the program, as you will see, it will say Jack, David, and Annie, which are the friends we specify. Well, let's add one more friend. One more friend that we sort of have but isn't really a friend, but that needs to be on the official list. This is going to be the official list, and then we're going to like remove the friend and give an actual list of our friends. So let's create a friend, uh, friends of pushback. Let's call him Tim. So now if we run the program, as you will see, we'll say Jack, David, Annie, and Tim. But there's one more little function that we can do. What if we don't want to use a specific friend anymore. What is he? What if he isn't a friend anymore? What we can do is call friends pop back. What this will do, it will remove the last friend that we specified. So basically, right now Tim is going to be the last one since he was last added to the vector. So Tim will be removed. So if we copy this and do the for loop again at the end, if we now run the program, which we'll see, we'll say Jack, David, Annie, Tim, and then Jack. David Annie. What if we don't want to remove someone at the end of the vector, so we want to leave Tim, but we want to remove someone that's more in the middle, for instance, David? What we then need to call is a function called swap. So just type in swap, and then what you need is you need two different operators. What we're going to do is we're going to call friends, and then uh, we're going to specify the index of David. So this is going to be one. Remember that you always start counting at zero, not one. And then we're going to use friends at back. Basically what this does is it will swap the values, but why do we use dot back and not a specific index for this? Well, what that back does, it basically always returns the last element in the vector. So we'll basically return Tim right now. Now that we've done that, we can simply just call friends.popback. So if you remove this friends.popback and simply keep this swap, friends1 and friends.back, and then call popback, what you will see is that we have a vector which still contains Tim, 
but it contains Tim at the second place, the place that David used to be. That's because we swapped David and Tim and then removed David. So that's basically everything that I have to say about vectors right now. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about pointers, so be prepared.